Hello and welcome people to our ninth, I want to say ninth session of Touchstone, a D&D 5th &D fifth, uh, fifth Ed adventure. Uh, just a bunch of guys playing around and trying not to die horribly, which kind of failed last time. Uh, if you haven't caught the last episode, we uh, suffered a fatality in the party. A Mr. Greff is now gone, unfortunately. We did gain a new member whose name is Tinkle. Um... And uh, right now we're dealing with the fallout of what occurred in an episode, which was also a massive fire that took out a farm, and a few other things, uh, resisting arrest, uh, assaulting a guard, murder of a guard, you know, that kind of thing. Um, we're going to proceed directly to the trial, and we'll have fun from there. So right now, our good friend Escanor is being brought in. Uh, in chains, of course. He's not that well trusted. He's being brought in chains to the... Uh, to the trial, followed by closely by Ragnar, a blue dragonborn who has his hands, elbows, knees, ankles, and mouth all completely tied up. He can't even speak at the moment. So we're going to get started uh, here pretty quick. Um, don't think we have the time to wait for everybody, so we're going to get started as you guys come into the center of town near Town Hall. You see, standing there is a large group of people, most of them looking a little bit rough, so you think they're probably miners or something similar. You see a standoffish group of people wearing black clothing, mostly most of it very fine cut, but all of it chased in gold, with the gold W emblem uh, right on the left breast, as well as uh, some of them have the crimson or ruby heart. Not all of them, but some of them do. Uh, you also see a, three other groups of people who are dressed kind of similarly in different colors. They're wearing the flat black chased in silver, the flat black chased in bronze, and the flat black chased in an emerald green, each of them with a family emblem on them. Of course, your, your uh, attention is not pulled to them, but instead to what's waiting ahead of you, which is a large podium, which is directly next to a large gallows. Now, the gallows has already been set up. It's not, uh, it wasn't there the last time you were in here, which was uh, dealing with the assailant, the assassin, and the invisible church, the, the invisible cathedral, or the illusory cathedral, however you want to call it. But it's there now, and you can see that there are five distinct nooses hanging up at different heights to execute different races. There is a man wearing a black hood standing at either end. And then there's a party of five folks who are standing in front of the podium. Each of them is wearing silvery kind of armor, except for one of them, who is wearing this sort of chainmail covered in green padded cloth. There's also a, out of the five of them, uh, one of them is absolutely massive, wearing a full out set of plate mail armor, having a massive tower shield with a large greatsword strapped to his back. Uh, underneath that is a bow and a quiver. He looks very heavily armed and very gruff and intimidating for a human, you think. Along with you are two people who are relatively recognizable, uh, leading the way. Well, recognizable to some of you, not all of you. And that would be... Give me one second to pull up the right sticky note. Uh, that would be uh, Captain Dagon, who promised to give a good reference on behalf of Escanor, and Commandant Agonon, who is the leader of the guards and the head jailer, as it were, who is there to carry out the sentence if a sentence is necessarily violent in nature and not easy to perform. So as the trial begins... A cleric, kind of a one of the one of the group of five at the front who's wearing silver, um, stands stands and walks forward carrying with him a bundle of scrolls. He pulls out one of them, nods for a moment, motions, and the large one, the huge, heavy, intimidating one, stands and goes to the top of the podium and just says quickly, "Begin." Now, as the dwarf kind of pulls out the scroll, and it is a dwarf, he looks at the rest of you nods, and from behind, Escanor and Ragnar, who's not here at the moment, are pushed to their knees. The dwarf reads aloud, You are brought here on the charge of murder. You are brought here on the charge of assaulting innocence and assaulting the guard. You are brought here all. on charge of burning down livestock, buildings, and endangering the public. And you are brought here on charges 
of burning down resources. You have impacted the livelihoods of dozens, if not hundreds, of innocents, and you have impacted the production of the farm, uh, the production of the nobles, who are most disagreeable to your actions. I have been informed, however, that on behalf of the Dark Elf and the rather chained Dragonborn, there is someone who wishes to perform an action. He motions to the Commandant, who takes uh, rocks, kind of pulls him out of the crowd, and brings him forward uh, to a shrouded body. He, as he kind of rips back the cover, you can see the body of the dead guard. He's already kind of gone... He's got that lividity thing going on. He's very rigid, not moving, and his face is ashen white. He nods to uh, rocks and motions. You have the floor. All right, I come up and I kind of look side to side and I pull out a scroll that everybody probably is aware we have. And I use our scroll to resurrect the guard. Okay. So you take a moment, you kind of pour over the scroll and as the words lift from the page into your mind, and you quickly chant under your breath. You can feel the kind of darkness coming off of the area surrounding you, the, the weapon, that, that sentient weapon that gives you part of your power, resisting for just a moment the idea that you wish to give life back to something that it potentially wanted to take in the first place. But your will proves just a little too strong for it to resist. Thanks. Thank you. And that shadow that quickly disappears until you are encompassed in a golden yellow light that swiftly courses through your body into your hands. And as you reach out and touch the body of the noble or of the of the guard in front of you, you can see the the color begin to return to his face, and the wounds that are obvious, uh, like just stitched over, begin to actually push the stitches out and close over. And you hear a rushing sound as there's a faint thump, thump, thump. And you can hear the heart begin to start again, and there's a loud gasp as the person, as the guard sits up and spits out uh, what appears to be a collection of golden and copper and silver coins just onto the ground. You can see in the back, Commandant Aiden going, Oh crap, forgot to take that out. Right, right, right. Um, and as he kind of sits up and looks around, you can see him look confused. And as he sees, as his eyes alight upon the drow, his, his face goes wide in shock and he goes to grab a weapon that's no longer there before quickly being pulled aside and reassured that this is fine. The magistrate looks on. Good. As the dwarf begins talking again, you have somewhat negated your debt towards the good people of this town by restoring to them one of their own. This is not a foul thing you have done. You cannot be forgiven for your original assault, but you are forgiven for the murder. Not this, you can see the Wycliffs get a little upset, just angry, that you're being forgiven even a little bit. Even just that tiniest bit. And you see standing at the forefront now is, is Euclid Wycliffe, the man who originally approached you but taking care of the goblins. You still must answer for much. We all know the value of a scroll such as that. And as he says that the scroll is being to crisp away into ash in your hands, burning out of existence. And that will be applied towards your debt to, the, to these people and this place. We know now, however, that your people cannot be trusted to do the right thing. Already... You have interfered in the right doings of these people and impacted them in ways that should not have occurred. You are a group of adventurers and are therefore suspicious and potentially lawless. We offer you two choices. But first, I would have you speak on your own behalf. Dark Elf, what say you about these charges? There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, there can be no denying that the crimes did happen, and as such, I expect to be punished in full for my part in them. 
And that's all. You don't ask for clemency or mercy. You don't ask for anything. Just you expect to be punished. It is the law. Begging for clemency or mercy would tarnish my pride. You can see at this, the magistrate in the back kind of nods his head. The, and you feel a little as if you've been given a reprieve. With, and the dwarf continues to speak, with the expenditure of this scroll, valued no less than 5,000 gold pieces, he kind of looks over at the Wycliffs at that point, you owe a small pittance. 2,000 gold remains. Now, if it were solely up to the laws of this land and those who lead it, you'd be given but one choice, a life of indentured servitude, earning perhaps less than a gold piece per month, toiling away in mines until you paid back their debt. However, having been asked to arbitrate, we offer you an alternative, which you may take if you so choose. The laws of this land allow for those who wish to pr prove themselves worthy another thing, another option, as it were. You can see Fabian nodding, moving his hand, like, get it along, keep going, come on. You may take a brand, which will prevent your hostility, except in the defense of your own life. And you will take one of ours with you, a warden, to make sure that you don't stray from the path of what is right and just and true again. Or indebted servitude. Your choice. What say you, Dark Elf? Warden would accompany us outside of the walls of Oh, uh good sir, you are very extraordinarily quiet. Oh. Like actually I even turned you up. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've turned you up a little bit. Can you try talking again? Did myself. How's that? No, still very I can, quiet. I can barely hear you and hear it, Max. Yeah. And again? We're going to have a max, and then he'll come back and, like, blow our ears up, probably. That's part of his evil plan. Slowing us into a false sense of security. Obviously. So he uh, still looks at you waiting for your response. It's like the little chat menu came up and you're just waiting to reply. He just paused, mouth open, looking at you. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm not sure why it's so quiet. Oh my. Um, it shouldn't be. Well, that's really weird. I have I have my volume turned fairly far up, and I can't quite hear you. <laughs> I can't hear him. All right. Uh... It's, it sounds like the microphone you're using, or you're expecting that you're using, is not the microphone that's actually picking it up. It should be. There shouldn't be anything else. Is that plugged in all the way? Yeah, if you have a head. Headset, maybe the, the actual plug isn't all the way. While you figure that it, we're actually going to swap to Ragnar. And the, the the dwarf looks at his, obviously, boss for just a moment, then motions for your muzzle to be dropped a little bit. You can notice he's definitely standing on guard, waiting for you to do something absolutely reckless. And he looks at you and says, You are offered the same deal. Though you did surrender without a fight, you are known to have caused a great deal of damage to the town. You are part of this party, so there... 
donation, as it were, does apply to you as well. And you can either accept the brand and our warden, or you can accept indebted servitude. Which do you choose? Well, I'd have to say the best option to try to help people is be out there, so I'll take the brand and the warden. I could still try to help the people as best I can. I want to try to keep them out of trouble as best I can. So I'll accept the, uh, the brand. A noble ideal, if slightly overdone. All right. Mr. Chase, how you doing? He's muted now. Ah. <laughs> I might just be running uh That's my thought. And running tests and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I one hundred percent apologize. I for sh sure thought it was Wednesday all day long today. No worries. Ryan Ryan shows up and he's like, Why aren't you on D D? And I'm like, It's Wednesday. No, it's Thursday. Oh crap. <laughs> oh yeah I mean I'm happy now though because that's one less day of work this week that's fair yeah so that is, that is a bonus I totally get it I was working literally up until like like 7.45 yeah <laughs> and I started doing the backstory for this character <laughs> oh yeah so oh it's it's been a week <laughs> yeah it has trust me <laughs> so while this is going on is like Kinko in the crowd with people or yeah yeah so you'd be you'd be part of the crowd part of the area so while this is going on is like Kinko in the crowd with people okay. or, so yeah yeah so you'd be you'd be part of the crowd oh, part of the weird. area oh, that's way better <laughs> it's yeah i have a studio mic but for whatever reason it's not getting picked up so like the it's going through the mixing board at the proper levels but it's not going through discord so okay um so yeah so the the attention turns back to you quickly um for a moment he awaits your response as to which you would prefer uh, this retainer, will he accompany us outside of Touchstone? Not retainer, a warden of the true saints. Do not yeah. make any mistake. If you stray from the path of what is just and right and true, he will execute you. But yes, his job will be to follow you. I just don't want him to needlessly have his life endangered on our adventures. But I will accept a warden. It's good that you care about others in such a fashion, but trust me, no member of the Order of the True Saints is a pushover or a weakling. Not even an acolyte such as I. Regardless, if you accept the brand, then he kind of motions to uh, one of the families, and you can see there's the, the symbol of a bird flying on the chest with a crimson heart, and they come forward. They're all like, they all look like a very stern set of people, all of them human esque you want to say not not quite human too muscular and stout a little shorter than average to be true humans and they come forward bearing a long iron rod at the end of which is a large brand with a capital letter t on it um as they come forward the commandant and uh, commandant agonon and captain um important to know these names Captain Dagan, reach around and they actually open up your shirt a little bit. And as the the, the person with the with the with the brand approaches, it begins to glow red hot. He looks at you and he whispers, "Make sure you're ready for this." And without much other warning, he jabs at your chest below the holy symbol that you had tattooed before. And as it burns into you, you feel not a physical pain, but one that affects your mind. And you can't 
regardless of what you do to try and twist away, even if the brand is taken away, you feel that burning sensation, not on your flesh, which didn't crisp or blacken, but instead just gained this scarred tea. Um, you can feel the burning in your mind. As the creature, or as the person walks over to the dragonborn, he doesn't seem to give as much care. Instead, he just jabs him directly. No warning, not waiting for the shirt to be lifted or torn asunder or anything. Right through the clothing, onto your flesh, through, and you can feel it push, pushing through your scales until they chip away and leave that delicate layer of skin underneath completely exposed with this branded T. Now, the cre- as he kind of leaves... The, the the iron brand kind of settles and the large man stands up from the top of the podium there's no need for the gallows today he motions his hand and the two men beside it begin trying to disassemble it you will take him he points to the gentleman wearing the kind of green padded armor over the uh, Chainmail. Do not disappoint me. I will return. And with that, he gathers up the rest of his people and leaves. And you can see, just for a moment, the entire crowd gets kind of edgy and nervous. Like, there was, there was no blood. There was no death. There was no entertainment. What happened? But sensing this, the big man turns around, looks at all of them, and with just a single glare, calms the entire crowd with it reaching for his weapon. He takes a moment, nods, looks to the white cliffs, and kind of taps his thigh for some reason. As he walks away, they disperse first, followed by the other noble families relatively quickly, and then the crowd of angry citizens kind of go afterwards. So you were well, left he with... Does that. Yeah. I do that. Can I do an action while he does that? Absolutely. Okay, I have a spell called Detect Thoughts, mm-hmm. and I want to cast it on him while he's doing that. What, the, the glare? On, like, the, the whole little situation where he does the tapping on the thigh and everything. Uh, okay, absolutely. Give me a moment here. <clears throat> okay, uh, can you copy-paste that in the chat so I can see exactly what you're going to do to him? Absolutely. Give me two seconds here. Oh no, those trays. Okay. Uh, I've already got it, so it's good to go. What we're going to get you to do okay. is... So you, you do glean his surface thoughts. And the only thing you really get is this like sense of disgust at the Wycliffs and like the, the feeling that they're unclean. If you want to probe further, uh, it's going to take a wisdom save on my part. Okay, yeah, I'll probe for a little bit further. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, where did he jab me, Devin? Directly in the stomach. Oh. Yum. Is the captain still around? Yeah, the captain's with you. Uh, what is your spell save DC? Mine? No, no. Uh, 14. Okay, so you probe deeper into his thoughts and you get a rigid sense of honor and appreciation and then you actually feel his thoughts for the Wycliffs and you can feel the thought that they're, they're liars and schemers. They're not worthy of honor or justice or this tribunal. They should have all just been killed because they aren't worth the time. And still under that, you can feel pity and gentleness for the children of the Wycliffs who are about to go through such awful upbringing. And then his eyes snap to you, and you make an imposed intelligence save. I will do that, but at the same time, uh, that's what I was looking for. And I want to cast a um, message to him. after. I'll, I'll say the message after I do the save. Yeah. Intelligence, you said? Yep. Oof. 
Uh, the spell immediately ends. Your mind semi-torn asunder as the shards of the spell reverberate back at you. And that glare doesn't ease for quite some time. I need you to make a wisdom save. Okay. Okay. You can feel this intimidating glare. And as it kind of passes over your bones, you can feel the terror of death as this man literally nearly kills you with a glance. And then it lifts. And you send your message? Yeah. I want to say um, I understand the position you're in, and I'd be glad to take care of business for you. At that, he smiles, nods at you, and you get a sense of, you're not sure what, just a sense of something beginning as he continues to walk away. It's beginning to feel a lot like friendship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With that, uh, for you becoming a hand puppet. Yeah. Uh, with that, with that, the crowd's dispersed, and you have the uh, full attention of both the commandant and the captain. Uh, by the way. For those of you who are affected by the brand, I'm going to drag you into private chat real quick, and I'll tell you what it does. Cool. Okay. What All did right. I miss first? Uh, you missed the beginning of the trial. That's literally most of it was just the beginning of the trial. Oh, okay. So, I was just curious. Yeah, uh, Rox actually resurrected the Fallen Guard and enabled you to not die horribly. So you are going to, you guys actually also owe the town about 2,000 GP to recover for the food stuff that they lost and the mines uh, and the miners that are not going to be able to work. So uh, all things told, the, the brand does a few things. First and foremost, unless you are bloodied, you have disadvantage in all attacks you make against non-hostile targets. Meaning okay. you can't attack somebody first. They're only considered hostile if they have ca attacked you or cast a spell against you. You have disadvantage on all deception checks. You have advantage on all persuasion checks. Because people will assume you're always telling the truth. I should be writing this down. Should you I? really should be, yep. I, I, I am. Uh, I gotta okay. pull this thing out. I, I'm doing it on the uh, additional features and traits on the uh, bio side. Yeah, so I put T on the stomach, and then I just I'm just going down. I got can attack first, disadvantage on deception, advantage on perception. The uh, persuasion, not perception. Or persuasion, sorry, I spelled yeah. that. Okay, so disadvantage on deception, attacking oh, yeah. on hostile, non hostile targets. Yeah. Targets disadvantage on which one? Deception. Deception. Yep. Yeah. Perception, advantage on persuasion. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, and lastly, should somebody kill you, they will be cursed. I'm not going to go into that, but it's something that you're aware of, that your, your death is not something that someone else will take lightly. Should I be killed? The killer will be cursed. Yes. I should. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So the others aren't going to know the exact nature of your curse, and you don't know it yourself. You just have a general feeling. What if we die to something stupid like a fall? Will the curse like go onto whatever we hit? Nope. It has cool. to be someone else who kills you. It has to be a living sentient thing. Okay. All right. All right, my peeps. So because we can't, they don't give enough actual information, so it's really annoying. The commandant and the captain both are kind of waiting for you to gather yourselves. Um, they do offer new, uh, new shirts for, or I suppose uh, Ragnar, you didn't actually have a shirt; you just had your scales. They do offer new clothing yeah. for the drow because the, your shirt did have to be torn a little to make way for the brand. Yeah, it was um, just in my loincloth. 
Yeah. Uh, at this that point, that. you do notice that the gentleman who's wearing the armor uh, that was green has not left with the with the other four of his group. Um, he stayed behind and is slowly approaching you. Is the commandant still there? Both the commandant and the captain are yes, but they're looking towards the man who's approaching you. Okay. Uh, Aiden, you'll notice that the commandant has a has a cross on his armor. No other emblems, just the cross. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk up and uh, you know, uh, hand on the uh, the pommel of my my sword hanging at my side there. And some... Name's Aiden. How's it going? Oh, you know, I just got branded. It's going great. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> kind of, right? I had it coming. Fair. Yeah, so did I. Fair. So who are you? Exactly. Uh, I'm hmm. assuming he's our warden. Yeah, I'll be your warden. At least that's what it sounds like, and I'll kind of look around to my superiors. Oh. They've oh. already, like, you were already briefed this was going to be a possibility. So you already know that you are their warden, and they've just kind of left you here to go on, because there are things in Touchstone that need more investigation. Fair. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I'm your warden. Uh, I'm basically here to follow you guys around, help you guys out where you need. Uh, make sure you guys don't get into any any cookie jars, that kind of thing. Um, not to say I'm not useless, though. I uh, I can dish a beating, I can give a beating, take a beating, whatever. I'm assuming so, if you're our warden, if you have yep. to subdue us in any way. Yep. Uh, I will have you know I uh, have a purview of spells at my command. Uh, if any of you guys step out of line, I can... Pretty well, shut you down. That's fair enough. Alright. Anyways, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am Ragnar. <laughs> I don't I want everything to be serious business, but. Now, as you guys are kind of making your circle of introduction and potentially being a little intimidated by a new new figure in your party. The Commandant looks to you and says, Now, I understand that you have some sort of business for the town guard. Your dragonborn friend there, and he kind of looks in your direction, said that there was a potential goblin invasion. I would like to take you out to dinner, as it were, for restoring the life of one of my men. I consider that a greater debt than you will ever know. Come with me. I common, this is com the Commandant, right? Yep. Uh, would you be against returning the possessions of our fallen member to us? Unfortunately, as per the laws of this land, they have already been sold and are being used to pay for some of your blood debt. Would that uh, go with my equipment? No, your equipment will be returned to you when you make time to go back to your original cell in the jail. So... Again, I ask you, will you take dinner with me? Yes. Okay, he kind of motions you to follow him. Um, the captain looks a little confused, not sure if he should come or not, because this is his, not his boss, but his boss's boss's boss. That's just told him, I want to take these guys to dinner. Um, uh, might I ask before I go to dinner, I get clothes on, because it would be pretty awkward of me to go in for dinner in a loincloth. Trust me, where we're going, they won't know the difference. Um, Ooh, this I'm sounds gonna, like a good place to be. I'm going to ask the Commandant if the Captain may come along with us, because I have some things that I would like to discuss with him, but it would also be rude to say no to the invitation to dinner. Yes, of course. The, the Captain is more than welcome to come. I thought I made that clear. Either way, we, we travel on. And he heads towards the port gate. Um... Which is not exactly the happiest of places. Um, as you kind of approach, you do see that the, the place is loud and body. There's music kind of everywhere. And there's a lot of refuse lining the streets as if this place is mostly ignored. Um, you reach the far, uh, like, 
the, the, the far section of town, outside Port Gate, or the gate itself, over here in this building right there, if you can see where I'm pinging, to an inn called the Salty Sailor. <laughs> and as you step inside, uh, some of the music is coming from in here, and there is a very loud, very naked woman singing on a stage, taking a taking most of the attention on herself. Very few men, all of them look rough and weathered and grim. Uh, actually take a look at the people entering the door. Most of them have their attention and comments, very awful comments, focused on the lady, who's doing an admirable job of singing over all of the hubbub. Now, he t- he nods to a bartender um, who seems to be wearing a sort of pendant that matches the symbol on his armor and heads towards the side room. Once the doors are opened and shut, you hear nothing from the outside. And as he kind of sits down, he looks at all of you and nods. Um, he doesn't say anything for about five or so minutes until a rough dinner it looks better than you'd expect from this place and definitely not food from around here. A lot of these grains are foreign, even though you've traveled for a long distance. You, you've never seen that kind of food before. And as it's set down in front of you, she was given a glass, a tall glass of ruby red wine. And the man passes... The, the the person who brings it a single platinum piece, not even bothering to look what it was. Now, oh, I, I slam it. Oh, um, that is that is exactly what I would do. Make a con save. Is it considered poison? Yes, you have advantage Perfect. on this. Meant, and you'll still roll double ones. <laughs> uh, you chug it, and you are immediately drunk. Perfect. Not even not like you're you feel drunk, not just physically, but your soul. Like, you can't even comprehend the things around you at the moment. Everything is bright and <laughs> colors, and you feel I'm more feel intoxicated like than I've you've been ever been. For. Exactly. Just feel what I've been looking for my whole life. It like for some reason the taste doesn't remind you of wine so much as it does a spring meadow and flowers and the beasts of the forest all frolicking together and grace and decadence all rolled into one. More of a memory of peaceful times than an actual taste itself. You just chugged really expensive elven wine. Like really, really ex- like <laughs> like a thousand gold per cask elven wine. It was good. Yeah, I yeah, assume, it was. I assume that Tinkle's with the party right now, right? Yes, Tinkle's with the party. Okay, how's he doing with managing to grab everything because I'm so small? Uh, th- that such a thing was actually attended to, and you were given a booster seat. It's comfortable. <laughs> nice. I'm jealous. So, anyway, as he, as he sits down to eat, he eats very mechanically, as if he's not actually enjoying the food or the wine, and motions for you to join in as well. Well, seeing Yalik uh, get plastered like that that quickly, I'm going to resort to stiffing. Good idea. <laughs> uh, so Yalik, it's not easy to tell he's plastered at first because he just chugs the drink, sets it down very carefully. He's already drunk by the time he's swallowed. And he just kind of leans back and his face begins to get really red. And he kind of quickly, his eyes lose focus and he's just dazed and staring into the beyond for a long time, uh, occasionally so he, yeah, he occasionally he looks around with this big goofy grin on his face, and then goes back to staring off into nothingness. Uh, if I'm uh, happy, I'm not gonna lay on hands. That's fair. <laughs> oh, I'm good, man. I feel great. I'm, I'm I'm just gonna grab his chin and just face it towards the naked singer. Uh you were completely uh, shut off from the outside. It not there's no sound actually comes through here. None. It's completely isolated and soundproof. Ah, shoot. So, um, as you, as all of you, uh, begin eating, and it it is tasty fare. It's just not what you're used to. You should all know. You were brought to my attention before the murder. You don't say. Um, including me. No, not you. 
Oh, okay, cool. I don't mean to be rude, sure. Warden, but I mean the party themselves. Unfortunately... Fair enough. I just wanted to double check. That's all. That's all fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know your place well, Squire. Now, for the rest of you. You have attracted the attention of some very, very powerful people. You'll find that the assailants that did assault you are now indisposed to do so again in, inside the town itself. That doesn't mean you are free of harm outside of it. I've also heard tell that you have angered or aggravated the goblins, and potentially there may be an attack coming. So I offer you a question a secret, and some advice, if you'll take it. But first, to dinner and idle discussion, do not fill your food-eating hours with worry as I do. Come, discuss. Tell me of yourselves and of tidings and things. I would first... Now, is, is this Commandant from Touchstone, or is he from outside of Touchstone? You do not know. So, may I ask a few questions first? Of course, of course. Are you from this town? No. I see. Does... I'm from the core city of Elowen. Not that it should matter to you. No, but it matters to my next question. Does the moniker belief in the beyond mean anything to you? Where did you hear that? Not that I've heard it. I've read it. Where did you get it? Well, from here. He takes a moment and very, very slowly draws a dagger, holds it in his hand, and looks at you. Who are you? Ooh, shit got real. That's not what I mean. Very few know that name, and very few have access to his writings. Who are you? I don't know your question. I just know that they're here. And that some of them may be dead. And I know that there's a saint here that is hidden from view. Squire, take I, notes. I know, I cannot. <laughs> oh, hey, look, already on it. But I know that the people here hide it. That's why I asked if you were from here. No. I understand. Are you responsible for killing them? In a roundabout way, yes. For they had us imprisoned. You're doing yourself no service right now. Why were you imprisoned? We don't know. The, car the caravan, some of the caravan guards that we came in with were also imprisoned. Names, descriptions, now. Right to the squire. I don't know their names. I know, but uh, idle talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but and all of these people... Part of the... All of these people encountered the monks? Uh, yes. Forget the book. Pretend you never read it. That's my advice to you right now. That book doesn't exist. You will hide it and forget about it. Do not trifle with such things. Already the Order is here to discover exactly what is going on in Touchstone that protects it so well. And why? Why? It seems so many people leave this place bloodstained. Don't make me investigate you as well. You were just gifted clemency. I have another question. I pull out the Assassin's note and I say, Do you know what this emblem is? Yes. I told you, the, the assailants were taken care of. 
instead of town. This is one of the followers of Zant. A religious order dedicated to assassination. Somebody paid a very hefty price to have him come after you. Thank you. Wow, you guys pissed off a lot of people. It's oh, true, Squire. Uh, the people here are not exactly friendly. We have that effect on people. No, but you would understand. We're talking... I mean, a single assassin's worth, easily worth the price of the farm that was burnt down. You've made a very powerful enemy, and somebody wants you dead quite terribly. I'm just going to kind of half cock my head and smile and be like, can I get some of this to go? <laughs> he looks at you, looks how drunk you are, and says, absolutely. Thanks, bud. He makes a motion with his hand, and within two, three minutes, you're given a big sippy cup of the wine. Nice. That way you can't chug it. Ah, good call. I can see you still trying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I expected idle talk, not immediately chatter upon the issue that brought us here in the first place. Commandant. Yes? May I uh, have permission to cover my features while in public in Touchstone? Uh, I think the appearance of a drow such as myself might bring unwanted panic to the residents. We know much of you. We know where you're from, and it doesn't bother us at all. It's true. The Order saw your people's massacre as a very dark stain. But if you wish to hide yourself to hide yourself to avoid confrontation, I would allow it. Thank you. Not that I'm a one who's a fan of lies in any way, but some things can be forgiven in the, for the name of peace. I would prefer to not have conflict where it isn't needed. Shame you can't do the same for your dragonborn friend. Your scales are entirely the wrong color. It's hard to paint them. I could wear a cloak if needed. Now that is your decision. Still, I preferred talk, idle talk, your favorite colors, that sort of thing. What's Serious your business. birthday? My favorite color is blue, as you can tell. <laughs> Uh, mine's Oath Day, actually. I, I know, weird. Not many people born that day. But it made me who I am. And you? I don't know. I think it was like a little bit ago. Most likely. Most likely. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even coming up pretty soon. Wait, you don't know when your birthday is? I'm yeah, uncommon. I thought that was fairly normal. Is, is it uncommon to not know a birthday? Especially no. Uh, usually what? only in large cities are they actually recorded or celebrated. Usually a naming day of some sort or such a thing. Small towns typically just have a small ceremony and then everyone has a party sometime. Uh, I don't suppose Wait, it's too terribly have, uncommon. You guys have ceremonies for your birthdays? Usually a party. Especially the coming of age, adulthood. You never went through one. No. <laughs> well, interesting. Oh, he is well, still a little boy. I, I, I mean, well, I, suppose, I, I, I just kind of went into the military as soon as I could. So sounds like we need to have a party. Agreed. He kind of makes Way a motion again. Yeah, boys. Um, and he, he he shoes you out to the main room. Uh, without without even like letting you actually talk, he kind of pushes you out to the main room, like full of the sailors and stuff, and brings you over to another private room in which you are very suitably entertained for the evening. Uh, the captain left because I did want to speak to him. No, the captain's there, quietly eating, looking very scared. <laughs> so I'm going. I'm going to approach him now. 
He's sitting right next to you. Still going to approach him. Okay. <laughs> Easy him approach. Right off guard. <laughs> Easy <laughs> approach right to the face. Yeah. This um, is not how I expected the Commandant to be. I thought he was all strict rules and things. Yeah, he seems pretty laid back. Yeah, he seems like a laid back fellow. I suppose if you're not working for him, maybe. I mean, I'm working for him. That's true. That's true. No, he seems like a fun guy. Sure. <laughs> uh, what Captain, is it? I owe you a debt of gratitude. And should you ever need my blade, don't hesitate to call upon me. I'm touched, of course, but uh, I'm kind of the captain of the guard. I don't think I'm going to need an extra blade anytime soon. But if I do, if I do, I'll be sure to let you know. <laughs> Figured I'd extend the offer. Of course, but um, you uh, do you do anything else other than stab people? I'm sorry, I just I really don't know how to talk to a dark elf. It's uh, it's, it's new for me. My people were not. Uh... Most dark elves just stab, but my people were not like that while they were alive. We Do they uh, whips before they stab people. <laughs> we don't kill needlessly. Uh, laudable, Good. very, very uh, civil thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> but um, like the commandant said, your people were massacred. Yes. They were by a pack of adventurers. My entire town wiped out overnight. My condolences, friend. That's some hefty news. Yes. Ah. You know what? How about we forget that and just uh, have a drink? And he raises a glass to toast. I'm in. Clemency! Oh, I pull out that... St- I pull out that sippy cup. <laughs> he kind of tips it, and then um, he clinks his glass with yours, earning him a kind of scathing look for like potentially damaging crystal from the commandant. But, uh, yeah. So, um, as you guys kind of talk back and forth, is there anything else you wanted to ask him or say to him? No, just that I owe him. Okay. And... Should he ever need me for anything, to call upon me. Yeah. Um, do you folks talk about anything else during the, 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 the quiet part, the not important part? I have a question. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck's the short guy? I don't know. I thought he was one of yours. Well, I have no idea. I mean, I figured he was one of yours the whole time. He's been following you guys the whole time. I think have he's never I seen think, him in my life. I think we adopted him, man. Don't even worry about it. He's tiny. We picked him up. Yeah, oh, I carry him on my I'm shoulders not. every once in a while. Yeah, Too blame good. me for that. I'm Tinkle. Good to see you, Tinkle. Neat. Good to meet you, too. I don't think I've ever seen a gnome before. Is that what he is? I thought it was a child. You know what? Six of half a dozen, half a dozen of another six. I look up at Yalik and I'm like, dude, I'm 31. Really? I still carry on my shoulders, man. Speaking of which, uppy, uppy. All righty. <laughs> Give him a toss. Don't yep. you guys live to be like, like 500 years old? Yeah, I think you so. Baby. So you're pretty young. So you're still pretty young for a gnome, then, huh? Distracted. Distractions. I'm just, I'm, s- <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out the numbers on my fingers, and it's <laughs> I've got too many fingers going on right now, and I'm not sure what's actually happening. Mm-hmm. But you've got a stupid smile on your face still, right? The whole time. <laughs> Oh, 
old is everyone here speaking of idle talk? I am 25. I am 280 years old. Jesus Christ. You're an old man. I guess to by your standards, yes. I am. Oh, what was it? I had that written down somewhere, but now I don't know where it is. Bio. Go to your bio. <laughs> no, I didn't put it on. I didn't put it on this <laughs> one. It's on my D and D Beyond one. Oh, that's. I don't rough. remember. I think I'm. I don't know. It was a couple hundred. <laughs> couple hundo. I think he's I don't too even drunk. know. I don't even know my own birthday, guys. That's fair. How many I mean, how I'm, many years do I know has passed? Fair. I don't even know my own birthday, to be fair. I just have a rough estimate. Which would be? Uh well I'm thirty five, but as far as the actual day goes, I don't know. Fair. I don't know when I was born. I was found on a porch, so we kinda use that. Ah, that's a good one. Oh, guys, about... did, did... So, are you going to be following us along? Uh, me? Yeah. He's our warden. I'll be with did you guys the whole time. Interesting. I won't be leading you. I'll be following you. You can ride on his shoulders every <laughs> once in a while, too, I'm sure of it. Does, does, does anyone have my stuff? I left it with you guys. I believe so. It was where you left it. No one touched it, as far as I know. Did nobody think to grab it? It's still we there. We might there. have left all your stuff, bud. If it had anything to do with that fire, it's probably in that fire. Well, I mean, it probably... Well, it would have been either me or Yalik. And if we would have been knowing that we're going to leave there for a long period of time, I would have taken it with us. But I didn't specifically say that I would have taken it with us. Okay. I look up you're not going to leave, leave expensive stuff lying around in a hut you don't necessarily own. I look up at Aiden and I uh, I say to him, fire? There was a fire? Yeah, there was apparently a fire outside of town. Uh, to your party, I don't, I don't know if you were involved in it, but uh, there, was a, there was a fire. That's scary. Is everyone okay? I believe we... I believe so. I believe it was just property damage. But. (laughs) (laughs) Not going to lie, Devin. My character, as it sits right now, I'm going to give a glare to Tinkle. That's fair. Well, if pleasantries are dealt with, straight to business. Tell me more about this goblin invasion. I don't know when they will be coming. When we were there... They immediately took us hostage due to uh, the big Goliath. And uh, from from what we saw, there was enough there that they could easily take over over this place. We wouldn't even have dared to attempt to fight them with what we saw. Enough what? Goblins? There's always been enough goblins. They don't have the we, actual intelligence. S- Some of them seem smart. They had a wizard on their side, as well as we saw two Goliaths. A wizard. There. Was it a? They had a wizard. Pretty sure he was a wizard. Out of game. I don't know. I can't remember. It, it was a magic user of some kind. Yeah. To me, it felt more clerical. You weren't there. Shut up. <laughs> my, my character. That's, that's, why, so. that's why you said out of game. That's why I said out of game. Um, and to continue, while we were there... Just uh, shut up for a second. Sorry. The goblins had a wizard. A magic user of some sort. Yes. yes. What did he do that made you think he was a magic user? He cast a spell. Used the magics. That's very specific of you, but what magic? Are you sure it was him, uh, not an item? Yes. 
I'm 100% sure it was him. And he cast a spell where he could detect lies. Oh, hell, I can probably do that. Captain, ready the guard. We have to go on an expedition. Sorry, folks, uh, I think there's... this evening's been cut a little short. That's that's not good news. Before you go, oh, there Darwin. was one other thing. Our Goliath friend did talk to two other Goliaths that were in the cave. They were only telling stories, but there were two Goliaths there. Are you saying there might be an alliance of Goliaths with the goblins? I don't know. We didn't inter- I didn't interact with them. Neither did Rox. It was only our Goliath friend who walked up to him. I just want to put that out there just so that you guys are prepared for that. Good. So Thank you. Not, you're walking into anything crazy. I'll consider this paid against your, a small portion of it, uh, paid against your debt. Food's on me for the night. You can find lodgings here as well. I don't recommend it. The food is good and the proprietor is nice, but the beds have a history of being louse ridden. Good evening. He kind of stands up, adjusts his stuff, looks back at rocks and says, don't forget what I said about the book. Wait, I owe you three things. One, the cult of Margrave is active here. If you know what that means, you'll know that you need to stay hidden because I think they're the ones that are trying to kill you. Piece of advice, help the regular citizens. Trust me, they will accept you far more than the nobles will. And finally, a warning. Stay away from the wizard. He's far more dangerous than you think. That tower is an, a problem, we'll call it. Good even. Kind of makes sure his weapons are in place first. Checks his armor to make sure it's all intact. Kind of scrubs at uh, a little bit of food that may have dri- dribbled on it and walks out. Good day, sir. So if anyone, out of character, if anyone's keeping tabs, you have paid off 50 gold of 2,000 GP worth. Yay! I'm going to make Ragnar keep tabs on it. I mean, I'm also going to keep tabs, but it helps. <laughs> Wait, so we got 2000 worth of... You owe two grand. You've now paid oh. off 50. Oh, okay. yeah, you, you have a fine of $2,000 you're being allowed to pay off in small increments. Mm-hmm. You, have, yeah. you now only owe $1,950. I'm just going to do this on the bio. $100, Garlet. At gold. At this rate, you will have it paid off in two years. Perfect. Um, I don't think you guys understand gold conversion. Each copper, and a copper is, is worth around $2.50. A gold is 100 copper. So $250 for one copper, or for one gold. Yep, then you owe 2000 it's funny ah. because I, I, the lowest amount of gold I, or lowest of currency I use, even in game, is one gold. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't, I don't ever deal with coppers or silvers or electrum. I just play gold. Aren't copper one tenth of gold? No, copper is one tenth of so silver, 100... which is one tenth of gold. Yeah. Oh, okay. The one one hundredth. Mm-hmm. It's a penny. Copper, yeah. silver is a dime. Yeah. Well, this is fun. So, well, where um, going first? Uh, I got to go get my stuff. I also need my stuff, uh, assuming that no one picked it up. So, uh, if anybody wants to accompany either one of us, uh, I guess uh, it's Aiden, or you yeah, have to watch us both at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, as long as you guys are, you know, meeting every night at the same place. I, uh, I could stay at my faction, uh, place here in, in, uh, Touchstone, but I'll be sticking with you guys. So, uh, I'll, uh, in that case, welcome to the party. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I'm going to go with, uh, you to check out that house with your stuff. Uh, Me? what was your name? Escanor? Uh, I'm Escanor. Yeah, okay. I'm going to come with you. Cool, cool. Uh, guess I'll go back to the jail and 
get my stuff. Where should we meet if we get split up? Considering we're splitting up now, I'd say that's a good question. Uh, yeah, do you guys have a place that you stay typically? Not often. We could go to the ruins at the Miner's Paradise. Yeah, or we could try to find a hotel. I I can meet you at the Miner's Paradise. I've stayed there a little bit. Yeah, I know my way there as I take another sip out of my sippy cup. <laughs> Is that a nice place, Miner's Paradise? It's Used a wonderful to be. place. It, it's a work <laughs> in progress, but as it currently sits, it's the only place that it it's allows taken. us. Uh, it burnt. It was the source of the burn down that happened a little while ago. Wait, there was two fires. Uh, one when we first came into Touchstone, and then the other one happened two days ago. Three days ago. Uh, uh, Are you not from Touchstone, Aiden? No, no, no. I'm from Riverburg. Ah. I've been kind of here and there, but this is my first time in Touchstone. Ah, you're going to love it. Yeah, hopefully uh, none of our comrades attack any more guards. Hey, yeah, man, if the guards could that. keep keep the assassins at bay, we wouldn't have to worry about it. I mean, the, uh, the fewer killings that we have, the better. I would prefer no more, to be honest with you. Yeah. I concur on that one. Oh, you keep so your if... monks in check and we'll we'll be okay. Monks. What do you mean my monks? Oh, the monks in uh touchstone in check, then we'll be okay. I the monks that steal mouths. Actually I have no idea what you're talking about. I had my Oh mouth you'll learn. Up. It was awful. Jaw was like fused shut. Ugh, it was gross. Rocks and go with you guys. Are lucky. guys are I'd like to know what you guys are talking about. Oh, um, do you? Okay. As long as you can elaborate. Uh, oh, I'm gonna we... give him the whole story on the way to pick up my gear, because that's like a couple hour walk. Sure, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it I'm would just be, gonna yeah. hang out in the ruins. <laughs> So your gear is actually fine. A little smoke damage, so it smells like a good campfire. Um, no one's bothered it because the buildings, the, the building that you're going to was already abandoned. Nobody was really there, and it's one of the ones that didn't actually catch fire. So it's been perfectly fine. That was lucky. <laughs> good, yeah, safe look, place to store it. Looks yeah. really good. <laughs> is this place, like, abandoned or what? Isn't there, is there people that live here? I'm not sure. I didn't ask. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to gear up now. Yep. You take a moment to put your clothes on, or your, your armor on over the clothing and stuff, and set your weapons at your side. You look a little a little more paladin-y when, by the time you're done. Hey. Oh, are you a paladin too? I am. Oh, hey. High five. Heck yeah. <laughs> What kind of paladin are you? Conquest. Oh, oh. Why conquest? It was the fastest and easiest way to get to my goal. Oh. And which well, kind of cast paladin are you? Uh, I'm an ancient paladin. An ancient? An ancient? Yeah. Uh, preserving life and light and all that, you know. Not not the, uh, you know, justice is a thing, but it's not uh, it's not the be all that ends all. I hear about uh, more more about preserving than anything. I adhere um, to the laws of the land. So, Eric, what uh, what's your goal? Uh, I wish to avenge my family. In my village, you know, every adventure has the same kind of backstory as mine. So you, you say you're, you're looking for revenge? Yep. Oh, yeah. 
I'm looking to uphold the law. Fair enough. Well, let's see what happens. I'll be with you guys for quite a while, it sounds like, so. I look forward to adventuring with you. Yeah. Likewise. Now that I've got my stuff, I'm going to put uh, my hood back on. Okay. Kind of conceal mm -hmm. what I look like to the townsfolk. Yep, absolutely. Before I started stumbling my way to the ruins of Miner's Paradise, I definitely took a refill on that sippy cup. Yeah, it's already been paid for. <laughs> Beauty. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, Mark. Sure Yolik doesn't get too lost. Appreciate. So you know, Mark, everyone can hear you chewing. Yes. <laughs> I, I actually lowered your volume so it wouldn't uh, be crazy, crazy loud in the thing, so I'm okay with it. That's fine. So, um, as you guys kind of gather together again at the Miner's Paradise, you have a whole lot to think about. There are, of course, the rumors, the bounties, the books to deal with. So many things you could possibly choose from. One does come to the forefront, though. There's a lot going on in Touchstone, and you got to choose something to, to go after. What do you guys want to do? Well, I want to talk to the guards, see what I can do to help, just in case if uh, the goblins do become a problem. Unfortunately for you, you have to be human to be drafted into the militia. Adventurers, okay. especially ones with crimes hanging over their head, aren't exactly well trusted. Fair enough. Not to mention you'd have to be sent to the front where you could be injured before you could even hope to attack anybody. Oh, I was going to say just help carrying boxes be the bitch boy. See if I can try to bring down my debt. I mean, you could try, but of course you're not really... The, the guard aren't exactly in favor of you. You are a criminal. They don't know what else you're willing to stoop to. Yeah. Um, however, we have a door that we don't know what's behind. It goes down. And we could look what's there. So as you guys, you're sitting in the ruins right now. Uh, Aiden, they literally just walked into a place, walked behind the remnants of a burnt-down bar, opened up a trap door, walked into the basement, and are talking while leaning against casks, kegs, and what looks to be a few straw pallets that have been made up for them to sleep on. I'm playing my flute. Yeah, asking where he's playing his flute. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm here to observe, so... I'm gonna look at Aiden. I'm gonna walk over to the uh, where the wall, uh, the door is. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna push it and be like, "Here's the door that we're talking about." Yep, it's actually a pole, but we'll also you pulled it instead. You pull it open, and you can see a <laughs> smooth. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. You can see a smooth uh, kind of passageway behind it. It's a bit of a crouch, but even a large person could crouch and walk down it reasonably comfortably. Well, this is cozy. This is where you guys sleep. This is where we hide. Hide is a weird, weird choice of words. Sleep, pass out for the night, you know, whatever. I mean, I've had the joys of sleeping on one of the rooftops. I've slept in an alleyway. Well, tranced, but you know. So you guys are effectively homeless. Is there any cupboards under the bar? No. Uh, Man, okay. I'm in Tinkle's uh, friend. I'll just pat to my chest and Tinkle's can come and like curl up in a ball on it. <laughs> I do the whole walk around like the dog. And then I, I lay down. 
I expected nothing less. Nice. A pet. A pet gnome. Wow, they're so, bonding pretty close pretty fast. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I guess, what what does everybody else want to do? Doesn't matter to me. I'll go with whatever Rock says. He is the one who uh, helped me there. I mean, I mean, I, I'm pretty much down for whatever. I just need to, uh, you know, take a quick sleep. I'm feeling good and all, but like, I don't know how helpful I'll be. I mean, I've, I have rabbit holes that I can go down that. I want to do, but I don't think they're very interesting to anybody in this room. Because I know build there's at least two buildings hidden in touchstone. My ears perk up. What do you mean hidden? Grand illusions. There's there's a temple or a cathedral in the middle of town that looks like a grassy field. And people that are being kidnapped and taken there. And that and that's going on with the uh, that's the whole thing about the monks, I take it. Part of from what I can tell, yes. Ah. Ah. Then well, there's the... Rock, we could probably deal with the uh, book that you said you'd get rid of or bury. I never said that. Well, he wanted you. He said, I currently forget about it, but he wants you to kind of bury that book so that nobody can find it. It's not really a book, more like journals. I would still greatly appreciate it if you did that and got rid of it. I don't want anything to bite us in the ass already. I mean, the, the guy that yells Savash. Big enough. I mean, you probably wouldn't want to piss off that guy. Not gonna lie. Which guy? Uh, the big boy. The big guy. My boss. My boss's boss's boss. Oh, I wouldn't piss him off. He seems like a great fellow. He's very understanding. Yeah, just from what my understanding of that dagger at the table. <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, he thought I was part of that. It was a misunderstanding. We cleared it up. We're good. A lot of subtle hints here and there. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I probably missed it. I was right now. Understandable. Um, so, yeah, wherever. I mean, you guys seem kind of directionless. Oh, it's not that we're directionless. We have very many. I mean, just we... indecisive. Yeah. I mean, we got the original task that Wycliffe asked us to do. We got the task that to go go deal with some goblins. We got the task that the goblin wants us to do, which is to bring him Wycliffe. We have some random somebody that hired random assassins to kill us. We Love. got the monks that are more than happy to repay the debt of kidnapping to. Um, we got some grand illusion stuff happening in town, which is by the looks of it, no good. So, I mean, we got we got many things we can do. Yeah, I mean, just from that, uh, that initial talk with uh, the commandant there, the, uh, the order here is uh, pretty interested in in that saint that uh, seems to be hidden. What do you mean, interested? Well, that's... He even said that's the entire reason we're here. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, yeah. The saint... The, uh, uh, the order here is actually looking for uh, basically a misappropriated saint. Oh, I know where that is. What's that worth? Well, I don't know what it's worth. But it might get you some favor with the commandant there. I mean, well, he already knows that you know something about it. You mentioned it. 
Oh, no, I know that, but uh, I never actually got got close to it. But you can feel it on occasion, swaying your mental state in town. Um, I think Escanar would be the best person to ask about it. He almost seemed like he exploded into a fire fireball almost. I didn't like that. <laughs> well, um, I mean, that might be something worth doing is going and checking out that place. And at least you could take that back to the Commandant. Well, I thought he told us this... who works in the town with us it might not be horrible. But we also know that something shady happened here. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm just trying to help you guys out. I, I have zero interest, really, in where you go, but just trying to offer suggestions. And, like, only downfall about that place is last time we came from there, it was basically just, like, six of us came running out of there screaming, and we appeared in the middle of town screaming and running. And everybody gave us a weird look. Yeah, that sounds kind of like an illusion. It's not kind of like an illusion. It oh, it was def. It was definitely an illusion, and we definitely looked like crazy people. But I mean, like, what's worse than murder, right? So. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so at this junction, because the trapdoor hasn't actually been closed, and night is approaching. You begin to hear odd and eerie chanting coming from the open trapdoor. One are we second. In the, wait, are we in the tra- in the basement? In the or basement. Are actually, yeah. uh, wait, are we in the basement or are we up top? You're in the basement right now. Ba- okay, so and, we're here and we opened. Are you hearing it from like the, the secret passageway door kind of thing? You're hearing yeah, the chanting come from there. The secret oh, door. Where that, all that cold yeah, air was. I, no. okay, I opened it up to that. show you. Hmm? One second. I will go invisible and I'll go down the hall. Okay, as you, uh, all right. as you like disappear from sight, um, your footprints are still visible in the soot in the basement itself. So as you kind of pad over there and begin walking into it, the echoing chanting gets louder and louder. Um, and eventually it splits off into five separate tunnels, one which you came from, and then four individuals in front of you, and you can hear chanting as you kind of poke your head in each, coming from each individual one. I will go back. Up. Drop the investigation. Was it getting closer or further away? Uh, when you got cl- like the noise became louder the closer you got to the tunnels, yeah. I was like, I think people are on their way. There's a bunch of tunnels, or there's a four different ways to go. And I, I think people are on their way. Or something's happening down one of those tunnels. Was it a language I understood? Um... I'm in Tabaxi Syl- Sylvaneth. No, it was not. No. Uh, I didn't understand it, but um, I'm curious. How far? And it's right how, in front of me. How far away was it? You only had to walk about 150 feet or so before it split up into four into five separate paths. I I relay that. I mean, again, I'm I'm here to observe you guys. You make your choice choices. I, I kind of I'm interested. I don't kind of want to know, but well, based you guys don't want to. Town is I'm kind of curious as to what the chanting is myself, and if it gets me on the uh, commandant side, better. All right. What about you, Yolik? I mean, let's 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 take a solid 15 minute power nap, and then I'm down for taking and taking a walk. Just need to sleep off my uh, my little drinky poos as. I take another swig. Can I just carry him? You could, yes. Uh, Effectively, you could carry him. But 
he will go into battle inebriated. And I will. I currently also have Tinkle on my chest. Who's... He has curled himself into a puppy dog stance. Who, by the way, is now sleeping and having a weird dream about chasing something. Well, is even if we get... <laughs> See, and I'm like only like three quarters alive awake right now. I'm just kind of slurring everything to you guys. Uh, well, let's, let's wait until these two get up and then we'll, we'll head out. At least then we'll be full strength for whatever the hell happens. But will we? I don't think 15 minute power nap is going to undo what he's under. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, just going to point that out. Uh, like, sorry. I don't drink. Yeah. Ask him what were you saying? Would lay on hands just cure his drunk? Yes. It removes a poison, yeah. If you use, so five. I could, if you I use could five points. Cure yeah. your drunk, but. It's up to you, Yog. I mean, it depends if everyone wants to go rape Meow or not. Because if everyone's going to go rape Meow, you may as well just walk over and touch me as I'm like a quarter alive. And if, <laughs> and if everyone's going to rest for a bit, then don't worry about it. Well, it depends what the party's going to do then, I guess. Well, what's the, you what's don't the... know what's down there, so... So, I mean, I would suggest holding on to your to your healing. But we also we we could use the chanting to cover up our approach. But we don't know how much longer they'll be chanting for. Typically, religious well, cer ceremonies don't last that long. Well, if I carry them. I just stay a little further in the back and then we can follow the chanting and you guys can sneak up and try to see what's going on. I'll stay Not necessarily. With, uh, I'll stay with Ragnar in case we have to uh, lay on some hands. Yeah, in case I have to lay some hands on you. Okay. Ooh, that already sounds like a good time. So just cut. We, we don't have to go into combat. We just need to figure out what's going on with the chanting. As you guys kind of gather together and get ready to head down the tunnel, um, you walk into it one by one, already ready to potentially deal with combat by having Ragnar carry your unconscious folk, Eskinor beside him. Aiden, probably somewhere in the middle, I would assume, to keep an eye on everybody? Yep. Okay. Uh, Yalik is being carried, Tingle's being carried, so Rox, you'd be scouting ahead and leading the way? Probably, and I'll have my shield up. Okay. So as you get to the kind of uh, the, the, the five-way meeting center, you can still hear the chanting going on along each, all of it rising in perfect pitch and harmony. It doesn't sound like five separate chants until you actually peek your head <sighs> into one of the tunnels. You can hear the different reverberations. They're all happening simultaneously. Different voices, but simultaneously to the letter and syllable. Uh, Aiden, I'm going to get you to make a perception check. Okay, you noticed scratched above uh, the tunnel that you came from a symbol of your order. Oh. Do I recognize the... Can I hear the chanting? Uh, you listen in closely. You don't recognize it from your experience, but you might be able to recognize the language. Um, what do you speak? Common, elvish, celestial, undercommon. You do understand a little bit of it. You understand every every two words or so. Like one to two, like you have a really good comprehension, but three quarters of the words, I would say, actually, you can understand. Um, we bind unto thee a something to give to us the power we desire, need, require to purge the unworthy from our midst or ranks kind of thing. Uh, take upon yourself our hearts, you believe, um, to grant us this holy fire. Something like that. I mean, it doesn't sound inherently bad. Nope. All right, we're just going to go and check. Okay. Wow. It's at this moment that a piercing Especially scream. Yeah. 
there are five, sorry, four piercing screams that echo down the hallway that sound as if somebody's being killed. I mean, unless it was somebody else's heart. <laughs> so you guys have four right, tunnels. Now. We're going to call left one, moving all the way over to the right, which will be four. Which one do you guys want to go down? Uh, we can't tell which way the sound's coming from. It's coming from all of them. All of those were different screams. Those were the only things out of order. Except one. <laughs> one tunnel had no scream. <laughs> I, yeah, the yeah, one behind the you. The one behind us. Oh, <sighs> shoot. <laughs> yeah, I've got I mean, this, uh, shield and sword out now. Mm -hmm. Now that I've heard people scream. I, I'm going to start to try to wake up Tinkle. Okay. Um, Let's left hand rule it. Yeah, I guess. And I'm going to look at Eskinor and say, time to get him up. All right, I'm going to lay on hands. Is it dark down here? Yeah. It is dim. Okay, who all can't see? Or can I currently... Move? I've just been following who's ever been in front of me because that's the only person I can see. Mm -hmm. Oh, I okay. guess I can... Uh... <laughs> I can cast light as a cantrip. So uh, I'm for right now, we're shield. trying to find out what's going on. We don't want to jump in there, so we probably should not shine any light down a hallway. Oh, fair enough. Well, now that I'm awake, you can at least hold on to my shoulders as we walk. <laughs> and fair. I, and I'm, I'm not, the only not, one that well, a little, little upset that I'm not inebriated anymore, but... I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that can't see anyways that far. I'll mumble under my breath. The entire time we're walking. Okay. <laughs> so you guys, you guys yeah. are taking <laughs> the left-hand path. Tunnel one. Yeah. Yeah. As you go along it, you begin to hear the chanting subside. Um, I will ask: Does anybody speak goblin? I don't think so. Ooh. No. No. Uh, not me. Okay. Now, as you approach, you see you actually come to a sudden stop, and it's like this filmy haze is in front of you. It looks like a solid stone wall, but you can see through it. On the other side, you see a large underground chamber studded with the, the heart of Margrave pretty much everywhere around it, at least Every two or three feet, there is a massive ruby implanted in the wall into the bricks itself, and the, the crimson heart surrounds it. All of this leading up to this massive-looking altar in the middle, behind which sits a glass prism, which has a field, uh, kind of, it's kind of full of white flowers, and the corpse of a shriveled-looking humanoid. It looks almost like it's been mummified. In front of it, there are about a dozen or so that they don't really, you don't really take the time to count because in front of them are a dozen or so men or women cloaked fully in red crimson like the, like the mouthless monks. Only these obviously have mouths, they're chanting. Now in their midst is a very large human, definitely human, because you can see his facial features and stuff like that, uh, with one eye completely... It looks like he's been blinded with a scar. And in his hands are a bloody dagger and a still beating human heart attached with veins to the chest torn wide open of a small, frail woman. Now, as he. Lay on hands and fix that? Uh, probably not. And as you watch, she takes the heart and moves literally tearing it from the arteries and veins that attach it to this lady who finally dies. She stops breathing and pushes it into the prison, which coats it in this crimson red. And those around him glow with a now, you can almost say holy light. What do you guys want to do? I look at Aiden. <clears throat> are we scouting or are we fighting? Uh, I want to do, do, do divine sense. This place yeah, I'm also doing that. is consecrated. Not desecrated, but consecrated. Huh. Uh, okay, well that doesn't necessarily mean not evil. I'm still looking at Aiden. Oh, and, and see uh, what he's going to do. 
and it's not quite within your sense, but the aura is powerful enough that you'd feel it. That body is also consecrated. It's holy and part celestial. Okay. Are there any other celestials? Around? No, just that one. Oh, cool. We fighting or are we scouting? You're our lawman. You gonna I'm let them get away with I'm murder? Important. Yes. Which makes you a lawman. You gonna let them get away with murder? No, I'm your warden. I'm here with you, <laughs> backing you up. But we cannot kill unless it's self-defense. We are in so... the town. Yeah, we are not allowed to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, is that only Eskinor and I? Uh, the others do not know. So yes, it's just you two. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I'm just gonna cast light on my shield. Okay. Uh, the moment that the beams of light actually uh, pierce through what's obviously in front of you, it was an illus illusory wall. Um, you hear scatter, and uh, like the big man turns around and shouts that at the the twelve who surround him, and they book it. But he reaches from behind the altar and takes out a long sword and a shield, wearing nothing but robes. He approaches you and kind of shakes out of them until they fall to the ground. And he's wearing uh, the crimson pants, but He's just very heavily muscled and scarred on his chest. He faces you with nothing but no armor, just a sword and shield, clangs them together and goes, <laughs> I thought we had interlopers. Come, face me. I don't suppose you would just come with us and turn yourself in for murder. And you kind of talk to him. He's like, murder? This was no Murder. I mean, this was a hard. sacrifice. <laughs> was it forced? No one was hurt who mattered. Uh, That's not what we asked. Yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't like that. So, <laughs> so are you going to come with us? Or... So, here's what's probably going to happen. Uh, you're going to come with us. And uh, we're we're gonna go up we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna talk. Or you're probably you're probably gonna get a beating down here. <laughs> I sit in my holy sanctum and you think you think you can harm me. <laughs> Do you know who, where I'm from? I don't care. Here I sit bathed in the glow of a saint. Who I worship, my faith rewarded beyond the pitiful means that you can even imagine. You pose no threat to me. You will not leave here alive. We'll if I have to hunt that. you down to make it so. I we'll still think that. I think you should just come with us and we, we can we can talk about this in in the presence of the town guards. I think that'd be <laughs> He makes a motion with his blade and says a single word. Come. And each of you needs to make a wisdom saving throw. So I'm guessing uh, I'm not allowed to roll for persuasion for that. <laughs> uh, you could try. Um, I will tell you the DC is almost impossible. I mean, I already said the word, so... It's true. Yeah, go ahead. I have to hit that wisdom button. Quick question, Andrew. Yeah? How many vials of acid did Bryn buy? He bought two. Okay, I'm taking that other one, because you left everything of use, right? Uh, yeah, except the... Uh, except Oof. The bolts. Yes. Okay. Okay. So okay. you make the persuasion check, and it doesn't seem to phase him... Uh, but Escanor and Tinkle, you you seem immune to his pull. The rest of you involuntarily <clears throat> step forward into the chamber, and as you do so, you feel yourselves oppressed by a great weight. You're not sure what it's doing, but you feel this heavy burden upon your soul. And I'll get everyone to roll for initiative. And I accidentally just opened up my blizzard launcher, so that's going to be a thing. <laughs> the uh, ultimate initiative. Right. Uh, Tinkle, what's your AC? 11. Okay. Uh, Ragnar, you're still at 14? Yeah. 
<laughs> rocks, rocks. You're still at fourteen. I'm at uh, eighteen. I think thirteen, three, and two. How are we getting thirteen? Leather. Leather is eleven. Leather's eleven. So for uh, sixteen, because I'm 16? at fourteen. 11, 3, and 2. Yeah, because you're using a shield, right. Uh, Aiden, you have 18. Yeah. Yalik, you're at 15. My thing says 18. Uh, yeah, add your... got the... So what am I adding here? You have 10 plus dex plus wisdom. So 10 plus 4 is 14, plus my wisdom is 16, and then I have the Grey okay. Prison thing, which gives me 1 AC, yep. and I'm still wearing that white cloak from the old place, which gives me a plus 1 to armor. The robes from the monks. That's actually yeah, 19. So you have 4 from your dex, 3 from your wisdom. Yeah. So two, that's, from wis 2 from wisdom. Uh, oh, you say your wisdom is 16. That makes it plus 3. Four, 14. Oh, 14? Okay, so that's 60. Yeah, so you beat 18. Wow, your AC 18. is buff. Uh, Escanor, know. you're at 18. I am. Pretty pumped over my AC, actually. Yeah, it's pretty good. I I, uh, I have Shield of Faith prepared. Yep. So uh, <laughs> I can add plus two to anyone as a bonus action. Nice. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> I'm still sitting at 14. <laughs> I mean, Tinkle's wow. at 11, so... It depends on who's going to get hit. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at your initiatives. Ragnar got a 14. I think I'm going to go first, unless he's godly. Uh, Rox is uh, really good. He's not godly, no. <laughs> Three at eight. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, that's part of me. Jeez. Uh, okay, so who's going first between uh, Escanor, Yalik, and Tinkle? Uh, Tinkle. Yeah. Tinkle's go. going first? I'll take a middle. Okay. And Aiden, your initiative was 11. Perfect. Okay, so, uh, Rox, your movement action is spent moving towards this guy. You're, you're literally forced out of where you were hiding and you walk towards him you're not in melee range when you end your movement you're about 20 feet away perfect i reach oh. out and touch him with an eldritch blast because i have that okay go ahead and roll to attack uh unfortunately i didn't set it up on my character sheet so i'm just gonna roll a d20 plus your charisma plus a and the proficiency bonus so that should be a 23 that will definitely hit. Roll for damage. I believe that's just a straight up B10. Uh, uh, plus your charisma. So that'd be seven. Seven points. All right. Seven you're points. Eldritch, you you kind of you're you're forced to to bow underneath the weight, and you make the motion, and your magic seems slow. It doesn't move as quickly okay. as it should. It still strikes him because he doesn't seem to even be trying to dodge. And as it hits him, he looks a little surprised that it actually hurt him. Um, and then it's going to go to Ragnar. Uh, well, I guess now that he is uh, hostile to me, I can draw my sword. He has not attacked you. Yeah, <laughs> but I could still draw my sword. Absolutely, you can. But you draw your sword. You and for your movement, you're but forced. I cannot attack him. No, you can. You have disadvantage on it, but you can. I mean. You are forced yeah, to take that step down and move towards him. Uh, so your movement's been exhausted for this round. Yeah, so I'm just drawing my sword, and I guess... Uh, is it in this one where I can hold my action to, like, guard or something like that? You can take the dodge action, which uh, means dodge. all attacks against you have disadvantage. I'll do dodge. I'll do the, take the dodge action. action. Okay. All right, then it goes I've to... Never used it, so... Yeah, that's fair. Um, it's going to go to him. He's going to stride forward, grinning, and make a slash at you, Rox. It's going to burn. Uh, that'll be a... 19 to hit. And that'll hit me. 
Okay, as he ha as he smashes into you with a longsword, you can see the entire length glow and gleam, and you can feel a holy energy suffuse your body as you are smote. No, not smitten. He's really cute. <laughs> I like him now. That's twenty points of damage as he as he as he attacks you. Ow! And then he goes to swing at Ragnar. He's not in range to touch you, but swings his sword regardless, and out of it comes a brilliant beam of light. Okay, he does miss. Because he, he, yeah. So, he goes to swing at you, and the light, he, he managed to, taking the dodge action, move out of the way. The light scores the stone, and he looks upset that he damaged his holy place. But you can see it cuts through an easy two feet of solid stone before it stops. You're glad that missed you. Um, all right, so then it'll go to... Yeah. Aiden. Uh, I don't believe you were forced forward, were you? Yes, I was. You were, yeah. Okay, you're forced. You forced him forward. Um, you you are within melee range of him. You are not flanking him, but it stops you right in front of him. Uh, did I have to move thirty feet to hit him? Yes. Or to okay. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> well, seeing that he's hitting my uh, my wards, I'm uh, uh hold up my shield and I'm gonna fucking hit him. Fair enough. Uh, hold on. <laughs> I'm not going to hit him. Nope. You attempt to strike him, and the weight of... You're not sure what it is keeps you from attacking effectively. Fair enough. Anything else you got? Uh, I'm going to bonus action shield of faith rocks. Okay. Rocks gets a uh, two-point increase to his AC. Thank you, good sir. And that's until the end of the next turn, right? Uh, no, that's uh, fucking. That, that's the concentration uh, spell. Yeah, right. Sorry, that's shield that I was thinking of. Until I'm hit, I think, right? Uh, no, it's until he's hit. He has to lose concentration first. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, well, well, well. Let's well. see. Concentration up to ten minutes. A shimmering field appears and surrounds a creature of your choice within range. Okay, Tinkle. Oh, he hurts. All right, time to shine, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I am going to cast a spell. I'm just trying to figure out which one. It's fair. Sorry, I should have this already. Um, I will cast Magic Missile on him. Okay. Uh, what level? Go with two. Okay, so that's going to be 4d4 plus 4. Yeah, you're, you're, you, might, you might have to type it all in individually. Oh, yeah, I'll go to the actual spell page and do it. Yeah. It's like, how do you get that with that. <laughs> 4d4 plus 4 and he got 2 magic uh, so that's 2, 5 you need 2 more good sir just tap it twice it's fine <laughs> 2, 3, 4, 5 nice um, so 5, 10, 14 you kind of raise your hand and out fly um, several beams several, several motes of force that oddly enough look like notebooks they launch forward and smack this guy for a hefty amount of damage. I just look confused. <laughs> Alright, uh, it'll go to... Yalik. Cool, so I was pulled through, so I'm going to be right by this guy as well, right? Yep. Not flanking? Not flanking. And all of my movement was used? Yes. Cool. Um, we're going to do a solid quarter staff attack on this guy. All right. Then, s boom, spend a key, do fists of fury for two more attacks on him. That's Ooh, a critical a fail. Crit fail, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, higher low on that crit fail. Oh, 
Uh, we're let's go with a low. You are incorrect. The Baroque's an attack of opportunity from the dude, and you lose the last strike. But I get you... with my um because I've used Fury of Blows, I instantly get um the benefit of disengage and can walk away ten feet. Okay, he does still get an attack of opportunity on you because you critically failed. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Uh, so it'll be a 22 to hit, just like you. By the way, your quarterstaff, it hit him, and it hurt him. He kind of winces a Go little ahead. bit as you get him in the gut. Um, and he's going to hit you for I don't like 11 points of damage. Oh, that's not too bad. And you kind of disengage and move the 10 feet away. Yes, and 10 feet closer to his altar of his holy one. Okay, as you approach the altar itself, you can still see that the the lady with her heart that's been smashed to bits by this point, those veins and arteries trailing, is oddly enough still breathing. You can see her lungs moving in her chest. So we're going to go to Yalik Escanor. Uh, I'm going to cast Armor of Agathus on myself. Okay. And then as a bonus action, I'm going to compel the duel. All right, save and throw. That'd be a it's a wisdom saving throw, right? Uh Yeah. Okay. Uh what's your DC for that? I'm not sure. Okay, if it beats 14, you've just successfully yeah. compelled him into a duel. Oh, uh, it's 13. Oh no! So yeah, he does. He does. He ignores your willful command. All right, I'm gonna move into the room. I guess whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> so defeated. Right. So um, at the end of the round, each of you need. To, sorry, yeah, because we are at the end of the round now. Each of you needs to make a charisma-based saving throw. This should be easy. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Um, <laughs> I got, okay, I got my hands ready for you, Ragnar. <laughs> uh, I think I'm screwed, guys. <laughs> Everyone else is like, we're fine. Uh, still missing one person. <laughs> what are you doing? So Aiden, Ragnar, uh, I don't know right. where Tristan yeah. read off to. Ah, can you tell me what my punishment is? <laughs> uh, you are taking 16 points of radiant damage. Ouch. Everyone, uh, I don't know where you, what Yalik's doing, but everyone else is only taking four. As the hearts around the room brighten to the point that you can't look at them for just a moment, and it sears your very soul with a hurtful, harmful incantation. I am only taking two. You're resistant to radiant, aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay. That hurt, guys. It did. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so that's uh, depending on his save, he'll either take eight or four, but we'll see what he what he, what he gets when he comes back. Um, it's going to be rocks. You're up next. Well, I'm gonna chug a healing potion. Chug okay. a lug and ligand. All right. Uh, for two d four plus two. This is a little dice up. Okay, so you're going to withdraw the the stowed item and then chug it. So that'll be your uh, movement and bonus action to do. Okay. Heal seven. Seven hit points. Okay. And then I will pull out my crump and stick. All right. That's your action then, yeah? That is but, my action. Crump and stick. Uh, Yalk, make a charisma-based saving throw, please. Don't get a one. <laughs> yeah, don't get a one. You were taking eight points of radiant damage as the room itself hurts you and seems to light your soul on fire. Ooh, that's not nice. No. Uh, could have been worse. Could have been me. Sorry, what was that, Aiden? Oh, it was Eskinor. Eskinor, what did you say? I said I regret walking into this room, and then I said, who's the other one who didn't get pulled in? That's fair. I think, two of us. I think it was Tinkle. Was Tinkle. Yeah, Tinkle's still on the edge. Uh, the the light will actually hurt everybody regardless of whether or not you're in the room as long as you can see any of the hearts. So he's still affected by it. 
Not that you do see, but that you can see. All right. Um, it's going to go to after rocks. It'll go to Ragnar. Well, I am going to rage. Okay. Because that hurt. Yep. A lot. Are you bloodied? Uh, am I what? Are you bloodied? Or are you at half health? I still have more than half health. Okay. Didn't feel great though. Uh, I will move. Am I able to move so I can flank him? You would be able to, yep. I am going to do so. All right. And I am not happy with him. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, because he almost sliced me in two. Do I, would I even need to bot if I'm, do I have advantage on this, right? Since he's, I'm blanking. Oddly enough, you don't. It seems like the weight that's tearing you down is preventing you from attacking with advantage. Well, if I reckless attack, would that uh, negate that? It would not. Advantage only works once. I don't want to do that if I if he's going to hit me so hard. Okay, then uh, I'll just uh, I'll stab him with or yeah, I'll stab him with my sword. My long Go sword. for it. And I'm raging. Oh, I yeah. clicked advantage by accident. That's fine. You go to stab uh, him, stab him in the in the back, and a like it's like a thin coating of literal light prevents your blade from actually breaching his skin. Oh, uh, oh, he has higher AC than that. Oh crap! He's probably eighteen. Uh, then it goes to him. He's going to take a second, turn around, and swing at you, good sir, Mister Ragnar. Yay! I am sorry, but you might actually be dead. You critted or KO'd? I, uh, I, I did get a critical hit on that one, and it's a smite. Ooh. Five, I'm seven... Raging, would that be half? Uh, no. You, you'll half the physical damage, but not the radiant damage. Uh, five, seven, eight. eight. But it gets to, he gets to double the radiant damage. Yeah. Yeah. Thirteen. He, he, he is rolling ridiculously low. <laughs> Twenty... And 20 points of radiant damage and 11. So it'd be. So you're taking a total of 25 points. 20 of it's radiant, 5 of it, or 11 of it is halved to 5. So total of 25 points of damage is what you're taking, good sir, as he, as he smites you with his blade. Ouch. Okay. And then he's going to turn around and attempt to strike at rocks again. Okay. Don't forget, you have 20 AC. I have 18 AC. Uh, 20. The yeah, plus, plus 2 put him at uh, 18. Because shield's oh, a plus I 2, right? Had 20. No. Oh, I thought he no. had 18. No. Okay. Uh, so it would be 16 to hit. That, <laughs> that would have hit you before the shield. But the holy light protects you. What? What? Okay, then it's going to go to... Who's next? Um, Aiden. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's enough of that. I'm going to fucking hit him. I resolve to hit him. Okay. Or I won't. <laughs> um, I'm just going to sure. stand there. Aiden. I'm just going to stand there. Aiden, you do not have a guilty conscience. Roll with advantage. Oh. Yep, oh, he's flanked. Okay. Oh, I guess I'll just roll again. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> <What>? not helpful. <laughs> okay, that didn't really work, no. Nope. Okay, so you attempt to swing at him twice, and both times your blade... He doesn't bother blocking it. He takes it on his bare skin, but just before you hit, a thin coating of light prevents you. Mm. You can tell he's very strongly protected by some sort of divine influence. Um, this naked guy has a crazy high AC. He does. So that'll go to Tinkle next. Okay, sorry, I'm just finishing reading this one spell. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which I should have had done before again. Uh, I'm going to Scorching Ray at him. 
Uh, what level? I suppose you only have second level spells, huh? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and roll. That would not hit, no. Uh, you should have two rays, though, good sir. Oh, okay. Um... At least I believe Scorching Ray is two rays, is it not? Yes. Uh, you create three rays. Three. Oh, three, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, it says make a ranged spell attack for each ray. Oh, yep. okay, cool. All three of those rays of liquid heat just evaporate in the room. Nothing reaches him, not even close. Damn. All right, that's my go. Okay. Uh, it will go to Yalik next. So this dude's still holding that beating heart in his hand, right? No, it's it was pressed. Oh, he put it into a. It was pressed against the kind of like prism crystalline coffin that 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 ragged body is on. The it's no longer visible at all. It's gone. So the entirely. ragged body is just chilling there, though, right? The mummified corpse is in that crystalline coffin. Yes. In the crystal coffin. Well, shoot. But the person on the table is still breathing. Yes, with no heart. Cool. I'm assuming I can't just, like, reach through this crystal. You can attempt to touch it, absolutely. To attempt to touch the crystal? Yep. And how far away am I from this? Uh, you're on the other side of the table from it, so it'd be about 10 feet to... You can hop over it for 10 feet, or you can go around it for about 20. I'll just... I'm far enough away anyways. I'll go around it for 20 and try to do a quick touch on this crystal. Crystalline prism that the mummy is in. Are you sure you wish to do this? I kind of just want to throw acid at this mummy. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Not good. Okay. Oh dear. Um, you are terrified hey, down to your bone as every sin you have ever made is revealed to you and made into a humiliating montage. You can't even move. You're pinned to the ground by the weight of your bad deeds. Uh, until you succeeded a wisdom saving throw, you are considered restrained. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, moving on, then, because your, your, your turn's kind of gone now. Um, yeah. It goes not, to... Not you all saw him get pinned down, right? He's just not moving. He has one finger touching the crystalline <clears throat> thing, and he can't move. No one saw... No one actually. No one else saw the montage of his sins or anything like that. No one else saw a physical weight pressed against him. He just can't move. He stopped. He froze in place. Uh, Escanor. Okay, well... Uh... I'm going to need this dude to smack me. He's still considered not hostile towards me, correct? Correct. He has not attacked you. Mm-hmm. Then I will cast uh, uh, Divine Favor. Okay, can you paste what that does in the chat for everyone? There you go. So you concentrate on a uh, on an action, a spell that'll help you deal damage when he attacks you. <laughs> well, I can still attack him, but I just have a disadvantage. It's true, you would. So I'm gonna try that because there's nothing else I can do. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna swing at him. Uh, you don't actually have disadvantage, by the way, because technically you would gain advantage, even though you don't because you have a guilty conscience. Uh, it still cancels at the disadvantage that would be imposed by the other spell. So you, you can attack regularly. Cool, cool. Yep. Confusing, but oh my god. Roll, okay. Roll 20, thank you. <laughs> Higher <or> low. <laughs> uh, low. You would be correct. You lose the rest of your turn, but he does not provoke an attack of opportunity. Oh, okay, at the I'm end really of the... Awesome. 
I thought you would have done so well there without the disadvantage, but you did not. Everyone roll a wisdom saving throw, please, as the room begins to brighten with radiance again. Yalik, you immediately fail. Was it wisdom or charisma? Sorry, charisma. You're right. I'm thinking wisdom because that's what Yalik had to do. Oh, thank God. Still failed. (laughs) Hey, Tristan, you could have not won like I did and took 16 points of radiant damage. Hey, man, I immediately failed. doesn't matter if I really Uh, Ragnar, you take two points. Eskinar, you take one point. Everyone else takes four points of radiant damage. Sorry, no. Eskinar, you... Sorry, no. Sorry, I did that backwards. Eskinar, you take two points. Ragnar, you take two points. Aiden, you'll take two points. Rip armor of Agathus. Oh, actually, Tinkle will also take two points. It's Yalik and Marks so that'll take the full four points of damage. Everyone else takes two. Woo-hoo. Wait, what's the DC? Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay, so I was supposed to take four. You're supposed to take four, but you have damage, right? Okay, yeah, no. If you just give me the normal one, I'll just half it. Okay, sounds good. I'll half it on my end. Otherwise, I'll end up halving your half. That's fair. All right. Um, it returns to the top of combat, which should be a rocks, I do believe. Oogity boogity, you're hexed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a, there's a faint mist of like a black cloud that surrounds him for just a moment uh, before the light powers through it, but you can still feel your hex on him. And then... Hi-ya! Where are you, crumpin' stick? Where are you, crumpin' stick? There we go. Um, <laughs> Rocks, you haven't technically committed a crime yet here. You would have advantage on this. <gasps> Very nice. Okay. Uh, so how much additional damage are you doing based on your hex as well? It'd be plus two, so it, it adds my proficiency bonus to it. Uh, so it's, it'd just be nine nine bludgeoning, and it counts as magical. Okay, so you hit him, and you can actually feel a crunch against what feels like metal, and there's then there's a faint dent in the light around him before it kind of fixes itself. All right, yeah. so then it goes to Ragnar. Well, this is going to suck either way. All right, well, I'm going to hit him. And then immediately after, I'm going to use my lightning to hit him. Okay. So let's see. That will miss. And then your lightning is a... 19 misses. Damn. I was actually happy there for a second. I was like, yay. Uh, He will fail the saving throw Uh against your lightning. Guaranteed. Uh, yeah. well, he just won d6 yes. <laughs> okay uh, I'm gonna roll on this side this game hates me roll 20 hates me I'm pulling out my dice nah I get to use dice you guys have to use roll 20 oh, oh, this roll 20 hates me <laughs> that's fair that's entirely fair maybe you should say a, like a prayer to the dice gods um Gods won't help. No, they won't. Yeah. Uh, it's the computer. So he's going to. Who's around him? Lots. Rox, you're going to be the first target of his attack. You can see his blade charged with holy energy yet again. But that is a 14 to hit, so that's not going to hit. Uh, the blade's still charged. He'll attack you a second time. That is a 19 to hit, which will hit you. Yeah, that'll hit. That'll be 18 points of damage. And I fall down. Okay, you're unconscious? I am unconscious. Okay. Not having a guilty conscience, you immediately stabilize, but do not become conscious. You don't have to make death saving throws. You're alive, you're just suspended. All right, that's his two actions. Um, no, I'm going to action surge and swing behind me as well. Uh, Ragnar, I'm attacking you twice. 
He gets two for an extra search? He gets two. Uh, he has extra attacks. He does. Jesus Christ. So he has. He gets two attacks, and then he, if he action search, he gets another two. Uh, so that'll be 12. So that's 17 points of damage for the first one. All halved. Uh, so that's eight. Sorry. That's eight points of damage in the first one. Are you still I'm conscious? Unconscious. You're unconscious? I'm unconscious. Okay, you're taken down. Uh, the next closest one is Aiden. It'd be you. Sure. Uh, Seventeen does not hit you. Nope. Hits my shield, bitch. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you can see him like he he stops for a moment to focus. He makes two quick attacks, and with a blur of his blade, two more. You're not paying attention to where his blade's going. You, you see where he, he hits rocks and Garrox goes down. They feel a sudden heavy weight press against your shield and you realize you've been hit too. Thank God your shield was in the way. Um, Ragnar, you are guilty of a crime. You will have to make death saving throws on your turn. Uh, not yet, though. Aiden. Uh, well, our <clears throat> uh, Who's all around this guy now? Am I, I'm not flanking with anyone. I'm pretty sure it's just me now. Y'all Escanor is there, but yeah. I don't know if he's... Oh, Escanor is there. Escanor is there, yeah. It's you and Escanor tag-teaming this guy. Uh, Rox looks injured, Dude. but not dying. Ragnar looks like he might be dying. Yalik is still frozen in place. How's this guy looking? Fairly injured. Okay, I'm going to fucking hit him. Advantage. Mm -hmm. Try. A 21 ah, hit. Ah, then I'm gonna fucking smite it. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, that's he also likes smite. divine. That's not a great smite, I'm not gonna lie. But that is 15 points of damage. But it is a smite nonetheless. Okay. Um, as you strike him, your blade actually bites into flesh. You can see a thin line of red appear on his skin underneath his armor as you've actually managed to hit him rather hard. It seems like your radiant damage helped bypass the armor he had. Alright. Come on, boy. Let's go. Alright. Uh, then it goes to after Aiden. Tinkle. Alright. I'm going to do something stupid. Alright. Perfect. And... <laughs> yeah. Can't be dumber no, than seeing... the crystalline. Seeing Yellick frozen there kind of freaks me out, so I'm going to firebolt the crystal. Uh, give me a second to create stats for that thing. All right, go for it. <laughs> it, it, it technically... I like how there was a silence there. Yeah, um, go for it. Thank you. This, this is what happens when you become good friends with Tinkle. Okay, you launch the firebolt from your hand. It strikes the crystal, and you actually see it shatter a small portion of it. And at that, the wildly swinging man, who is until this point relatively calm, begins to lose his cool. He looks up at you and starts swearing in Celestial, if somebody knows it. I think Aiden does. This guy. Yeah. And he starts swearing at you, tiny little puntable bitch, you motherless whore. I will slaughter you, your entire family, and wear your entrails as some sort of disgusting miniature trophy. And I just say, careful. You might infer my ire. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's not having a good time. So, um... <laughs> Oh, I can't believe Sounds he did good. that. That's my go. Uh, <laughs> Yalik, go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. I going to say, does that, that like partially break the concentration so I like maybe get some advantage on this? Uh, I would not say so, no. Dang it. You succeed at pulling your hand away. You haven't lost any of your term. You, you, you come to the, the memories of guilt still heavily in your mind. And you remember, you're not there, you're here, you're present, you can look around and see what's coming on around you. As you turn around to take a look at the battle, two of your friends are unconscious. Not <laughs> decent. <laughs> um, this is a good start. 
Um, I have a random question. So, if I use a Fury of Blows, are you allowed to move in between attacking and Fury of Blows? Yes. Okay. Sorry. The When you make the attack action, you may then move to deliver the Flurry of Blows. You may not attack... Yeah. And then take and then one flurry or sorry one blow and then the second flurry of blows those have to happen simultaneously, but yeah, between so the attack like, action can, and so I can do a solid quarter staff attack at this glass that just freaking pissed me off because yep. I went guilty and then I can walk over to this dude and flurry punch blows. him twice. Yes, you could. Okay, then ten four. That's what's gonna happen. That is definitely enough to hit. Uh, that is, that is a glass. Yeah. Um. I guess I need to figure out what happens to this glass before I choose one. Yeah, you really next. do. So you hit the already weakened glass, uh, the crystal. And by the way, it is just crystal. It's not anything super durable or hard. You smash it to pieces. As you do, the body comes. Uh, sorry, no, the body's going to stay where it was, but all those flowers kind of flow out around you. And there's the heavy scent of uh, just this really, really heavy floral perfume. As the as the crystal breaks... Oh my god, that's complicated as balls. Give me a second to think what's going to happen. Sorry. Shit, I'm sorry, DM. <laughs> I'm, I am kind of am, but not super. Never be sorry for me throwing a curveball at the DM. The large uh, gentleman in question. Yeah, sorry yeah. That uh, first and foremost, the corpse does not appear to be a corpse anymore. It appears to be a small or a large or actually almost almost six foot tall living goblin. The hearts around you are faded and no longer have a radiant light. And the man in front of you immediately loses all of his paladin levels and dies because he did not have that much HP. Cool. And now there's goblin standing in front of me. For a moment, it looks towards you, nods, says something in goblin, and vanishes. Dang it, I don't speak goblin. Well... Uh, I'm going to go and lay on hands our, uh, uh, our people that are unconscious. Okay. Um, in the aftermath of the crystalline explosion and the immediate death of that guy... Oh, shit. That's always a good sign. Right? <laughs> and oh, then he just geez. shuts up. Yeah. Oh, shit. Leaves the DM. Okay. Left. All right. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to quickly break down because you guys are going to get a week of downtime after this. It's going to be chaos in town as around 200 of the noble family of Swiftry have immediately died. No, if ands, they good. died. Oops. This is minty. So, Aiden, how do you feel about murder? <laughs> Yeah, no <laughs> I would like to say I didn't land one fucking hit on this guy. I'm innocent. They, <laughs> okay, okay, just, just, I'm just. They immediately died of heart attacks and old age. They did not die of unnatural causes. Uh, technically unnatural. It was technically unnatural causes. But the entire noble family of Swift Tree's elders and their leaders have all been wiped out. All of them. Um. Tinkle strikes again. Uh, Between Tinkle and me, we got this. Well, I know what I'm doing on my downtime. I have oh, okay. Um, really threw a curveball here. Yeah, that's that's, that. that's 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 a different thing to do. Destroy the thing he's protecting. Seems to work. See, that was my whole thought. I was going to pour some acid on the dude's face, but he just disappeared. Yes, See, yes, he did. I probably would have been able to kill him next turn with Channel Divinity, but... The... I had to blow up the crystal. <laughs> yeah, um, actually... I'm actually happy how that worked. Yeah, I'm pumped. 
You just annihilated an entire quarter of the ruling council of this city. That's not a good thing. Do you know how easy it is going to be to take out the rest of them now? That is really not a good thing. They don't know it was me, right? I have no idea it was us. They're just dead. Well, I mean, it depends where that goblin went. He knows it was us. Okay, all right, sorry, I just got to think. Okay. Fine. The trial was a major landmark victory for you guys. That's a thousand experience. Nice. That. Oh, I don't even have experience listed on my character sheet. Uh, are we just calling it here at this point? Cause I have to. Because you? I, I have to. Like, there's so... You don't even understand what you just did. Um, <laughs> Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're Every not supposed to break the thing session. preserving a body. We destroy what's going on inside fucking Touchstone. Oh my god, yes, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. We know how much time you spent on this map, so we're trying to make it so we can never use it again. <laughs> right? Um, we're seeing how fast we can do it with saving as many people as possible. So, sorry, focusing, focusing. 1,000 for him. The paladin you fought, which was a paladin fighter and very powerful, by the way. Um... Does he count? No, you didn't kill him. Ah, the son of a bitch. But we did defeat him. Yes, you did, but that's not that's not what's important. Right. Uh is worth eight hundred XP each. Jesus. The what you just pulled off with a nobleman? Like, yes, you, you were you were supposed to like start hinting at the mystery, and that corpse would have actually helped you out. Uh, now you guys have no idea what the fuck's going on. You kind of come up above ground, you know, and there's it's really going to help us out. Two hundred. You you essentially annihilated an entire noble family. But I saved a corpse. I mean, to be fair, that is my character to the T, because that's one yeah. of his backgrounds. <laughs> I just don't care. That's my guy. <laughs> Just boost us all to level 10. 200 so, times whatever experience. That's, uh, sorry, that's a major landmark victory again. Uh, quest partially completed. That's going to be worth... That, 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 that's that, that's going to be worth another 1,000 experience. So that's 2,800 so far. Um, role play. 3,000 so far. Sorry? That's 3,000. 1,800, 200, 1,000. No, no, I didn't give you another 200 dead. experience. I just mentioned there's 200 oh, nobles dead. Oh. I'm not, I'm oh, not giving you experience dead. for 200 noblemen kills. That is not happening. That, that was that was an incidental <laughs> thing. Technically, we defeated them. <laughs> by proxy. <laughs> it was so wrong. It happened. I don't even know how much experience I would give for that. Uh, Let us know next I mean, week. 200, it, it's 200, each of the noblemen was around level 5, so they're around, worth on average, 500 experience, so it's 10,000 experience, divided amongst the six of you, so that's a, eight, eight, another 18, 1850 or so, but no, you're not getting that, so so far uh, we're at 28. I just spelled out at 1850, I couldn't have taken that back. You could have, uh, so, sorry, <laughs> no, focusing, no. 2800. Don't worry about it. Nineteen, uh, twenty-seven. You guys are actually rolling really good for XP. I'm rolling really good for your XP right now. Twenty-seven, thirty-seven, forty-three. I think we may have just paid off your life debt. Three forty-five, so. forty-eight. Because no one's gonna come take your life anymore. We just killed them all. Uh, forty-eight plus uh, eight, fifty-six. Family. The West, the West uh, people are still still kicking. But we know where the other three tunnels are. 62, yeah, I was gonna say there's three more tunnels. 69. However, though we can't. I'm glad I can't go down those tunnels games. at this point. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate it. You guys are currently level four, right? Yeah. Yes. Two hundred and seven. Two hundred and seven role play experience tonight. 3,007 experience. 
Yes. That's almost more than we've gotten uh, up to. That's, that's about almost double what we currently have. Yeah. <laughs> so if my math is correct, we're at what? Nine or six, nine, four, four? Yep. Yeah. Well, I've literally you, been adding it up. I came back. Yeah, yeah I think I'm, nine, at, four, I'm at five, five, oh, seven. No, uh, we're at five, seven, oh, seven. Oh, we are? Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, that's cool, so that's a solid level five now. I mean, I, uh, I love throwing... I love it when, when Devin gets that look on his face. Oh, my right? God. Right? Every time I play, so I get that. so happy. It does. You have... I, I just don't know how I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do from here. I am going to need a solid, like, literally... A long time to think about this because you guys just pulled off something you shouldn't have been able to do for a while um i am going to say you guys do get a solid week of downtime because the the the, the entire place is in so much chaos it's almost impossible to get anything like to get out of town every all the guards have shut down every single exit in and out of town uh the town offices are essentially closed down except for really like important emergencies um and that kind of thing Aiden, you are drafted to go help the commandant figure out what the hell just happened until you probably tell him what you saw. I'll, I'll just, I'll just tell him. Okay. So well, I'm assuming I heal up. For a bit. Shit, that's right. We you have the dude who's gonna. We, we got a snitch, boys. Guys, <laughs> 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 fucking snitches get I'm not stitches. No guilt over this. <laughs> there is no uh, guilt over this. I know, okay. but I'm not. I'm not hiding shit from them. my superior. Not the uh, that's fair. Superior and superior. Yeah, yeah. Healed at all? Because technically, I should be doing death saving throws right now. No, no, uh, no you were healed. healed. I healed you. I yeah. you. How much did you heal him for? How much? Okay, Nobody okay. brought it up. I'll just put five into him. Okay. And fucking, let's get well, the fuck out of here. After a week of downtime, I'm sure everybody will be up back at max health. Oh no no that's not it's more like for our, our escape because we just pulled mm. off some legendary shit. Yeah. No, okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Girl on the table. Is that downtime? Sorry. The breathing person on the table. Yeah, she stopped breathing now that her heart disappeared on the ground. That was a flower with the dead person that we shattered and escaped. Tristan's she actually did. right. She stopped breathing. Yeah, she's dead. Because uh, the heart. All does those flowers mean, were all hearts. Does this mean that? Uh, does this mean that all the people that died didn't have hearts? Like maybe they went through this sacrifice type exactly. thing. Exactly. Meta game knowledge. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm thinking out of context because I'm like, yeah, that make that would make sense. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anyone's gonna realize they never had any hearts in them. They do now. Twid. Oh, okay. The spell's I mean, broken. The ritual's done. A lot of sense as to why this whole town is evil. No one cares. It would make a lot of sense that no one has a heart out of game. Wow. I'm guessing also it's the heart of the Margrave uh, family that got fucked up. Uh, the, no, the Margrave was... family. No, that, that's the that's the Wycliffe family that has like the symbol. Um, the heart of Margrave is for the cult of Margrave, which while linked to noble families, sure. Primarily the Wycliffs, it, they're, they're not, they're not the same thing. Oh, okay. So we just killed a different noble family. Yeah, one we haven't even encountered before. Uh, the one that, <laughs> the, actually, no, the, the Swifties are the one that actually branded you. Well, that's oh, perfect. That's revenge. We feel no guilt for that. They're the ones that branded me and Escanor. Yep. Oh, nobody feels guilty for that then. Does did the brand? break it's still there no the brand isn't the brand is driven by your own energy not theirs so no it's still there um all right um uh, uh if you guys just want to post a quick goodbye in the chat just so we get a few more people talking for a sec and then we'll, we'll call it there for uh the night um i'm gonna stop recording pretty quick here oh that's my thing shut off, so I it hadn't really been. Every time I close my Twitch, it just shuts off for some stupid reason. It doesn't even show. It doesn't register I'm there. 
All right. Um, so yeah, we're gonna end the stream. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. That was that was certainly a uh, certainly a night. <laughs>